Okay, so number one, what should we pray for? Meaning, these should be added to our prayer requests. Okay, you always should pray for these things. And again, like I said, some of these things are going to surprise you. I just want to make sure we're getting heard there. Anybody respond yet? Okay, well, we're going to go on because it's being recorded. Number one, did you know that you're supposed to pray for Israel? It's supposed to be part of our prayer. Praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, verse 6. Are you okay, Sally? Waiting. Waiting. Psalm 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And what's interesting, there's actually a reward. We're good? There's a reward when we do pray. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Those that love Israel, that love God's people, are going to prosper. Peace will be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. So number one, do you ever pray for Israel? It's supposed to. Okay? B, pray for your enemies. Okay? We don't like this one. Okay? <laughs> Matthew, and I'm going to just do some subscriptures here. Matthew 5, 44, Jesus saying, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Ugh. Okay? And it gives you why it's important, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise, S-U-N, on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Pray for your enemies. C, pray for yourself. Definitely pray for yourself. 1 Thessalonians 5.24 Faithful is he that calls you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. The Apostle Paul is telling the church, please pray for us as I go out and, and we minister. Pray for your spiritual leaders. D, 2 Thessalonians 3.1 Paul says, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. And listen to what Paul says here. And I ask you guys, it's very important to pray for me and the leadership of any church. Okay? Paul says the reason why you've got to pray for your leaders is that, verse 2, that we may be delivered from, from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. Not everybody's liking what we're preaching. And we're going to be attacked we're going to be mocked. We're going to be harmed. Pray for us. E, okay, we've got A, B, C, D, E. Pray for everyone's salvation. That should be part of our prayers. And also for your leaders, not just church leaders, but leaders in all positions. That means presidents, kings, and governors, I guess you call it, mayors, political leaders. 1 Timothy 2.1 I exhort you therefore that first of all supplication, prayers and intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men. Okay, pray for everyone. And then Paul gives us a specific list for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of <coughs> excuse me the truth that means we are to pray for the president the vice president senators congressmen mayors the governors Speaker of the Houses, doesn't matter who you like and who you don't like, and we're going to go into this further, okay? You pray. What do you pray for? That they come to know the Lord and that they follow Him. And, you know, I want to say something completely off the cuff here that I'm seeing happening, and people, as Christians, when it comes to politics and stuff, you have to be very careful what wagon you tie your hook onto. And I want to I want to speak about something that I see Christians just diving into, not realizing what they're doing. Now, unless you've been living in a hole, there's this movement called Let's, let, uh, Let's Go Brandon. 
Okay, do you have you heard that movement? People chanting, let's go, Brandon, let's go, Brandon. Okay, in case you don't know, it's a dig to the current president. Now, I see Christians going, yeah, let's go, Brandon, but I'm not going to go to the whole background of it, but do you know what it really means? F you, President of the United States. That's what it means. So when you put your finger and say, let's go, Brandon, let's go, Brandon, it's a whole history of how it came to be, but that's what you're saying. I'm telling you, Christians, don't be a part of that. Okay? Just be careful with what you, yeah, I'm going to be for this. Watch your testimony. It's a dangerous thing. You know, people, sure, we don't have to like everyone in the office. We can really despise someone, you know, not hate them, but really despise what they stand for. But this whole thing that's let's go Brandon movement, trust me, you'll see it around. I don't know how you haven't seen it. It's everywhere. Christians should not have anything to do with it. Because, and I'll tell you two reasons why. Number one, we're supposed to be honoring to those in power. Doesn't matter who they are. Okay? I'm going to show you scriptures that are going to blow your mind. And it's amazing. You read these scriptures and people don't like it. It's like, oh, I don't want to see what God says about this. Oh, no. Don't make me read that. Please, Pastor. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves as they must give an account. They have to give an account for their lives. You need to submit to their authority. Hebrews 13, 24, salute all them that have the rule over you and all the saints. Okay? It's part A of that scripture. People, you are to give honor to anyone who's in a position of authority. You might completely disagree with them. They can be the worst person on the planet, but you've got to respect the position. Okay, so now when, you know, people are going, this is great. And, you know, when the current president, who's not really liked, it seems, when he goes to a town and people are giving him the finger and all these things, when they did it for the other president, it wasn't right. And when they do it for this president, it isn't right. You can voice your opinions at the polls, okay? And you can protest things, but don't be vulgar, okay? You can't be vulgar and say, well, God knows this is no good, so he's with me. No, he's not with you. 1 Peter 2.13, submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto the governors. He says this, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. And look at verse 16 of 1 Peter 2. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Now what are people saying? Well, you know, I'm a Christian pastor and I don't like these people. I don't like what they stand for. I'm free to do whatever I want to do. God says you are. But don't let that liberty be an excuse to be malicious. Okay? You can't say, well, in this count, God doesn't care. I can say anything I want. No. You know why God is so concerned about this? Because we as Christians are supposed to be the upstanding citizens. We, we obey the police. Do you like every police officer who pulls you over? Right? And gives you a ticket. Thank you, officer. I love you so much. You're the best guy in the world. But we respect him. Maybe we don't think we should have gotten a, a, a ticket. We respect those in authority over us. That's what the Bible says. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, Honor the king wherever he may or whoever he may be. Servants, be subject unto your masters with all fear, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the forward. Obey those rules of the people that 
even you don't agree with. So many Christians, well, I, I don't want to, that's not really what God's saying there. I can be vile and nasty because I have a right to now. But I will give you hope. You know what you could do if you don't like someone in office besides voting? You know what the Bible says? You can pray this. Psalm 109.8, let his days be few and let another take his office. Did you ever see that scripture? It's a true scripture. Psalm 109 verse 8, let his days be few and let another take his office. So you can pray that. Lord, I, well, I can't wait until this is out and another one comes in or this one's in and another one comes out. Okay? Pray. Pray and vote if you happen to be in a country where we can vote. Not every nation has that. But let's get back to our list there. F, pray that in everything we do, God will be glorified. God the Father and God the Son. And we'll talk a little bit more on this later. And I, I just want to go over these one more time, okay? Pray for Israel. Pray for your enemies. Pray for yourself. Pray for your political leaders, leaders at your boss, Okay? Pray for everyone's salvation. Pray for your political leaders. Honoring them. And then in everything you do, pray that God will be glorified. John 5, 23, Jesus says that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, Jesus Christ, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Okay? Everything we do should be, what did Jesus always do? Not for, that God would receive the glory for the glory of the Father. Always for the glory of the Father. Okay, G in our list of, of what we should pray for. That all people would come to Christ. Meaning people would get saved. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. And, you know, it's an interesting thing. You know, sometimes when we just look at people that we can't stand, people that we don't like, we feel like, oh, I don't have to pray for them. I don't care about their salvation. Do you know that God died for every single person? You know, Jesus went to the cross for Adolf Hitler. He could have been saved, and those people should have been praying that he would come to Christ. We need to pray. i got to pray for them. That guy, I hate them. Well, first of all, you shouldn't hate anyone. You cannot like them, okay, a lot. <laughs> There's some people I definitely don't like a lot, <laughs> but I can't. Hate. Hate is a powerful word. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, pray for them. Pray what? Pray for their salvation. Pray that they bend the knee to Christ. Pray that they seek God's wisdom. Because not every leader is going to be a Christian. That idea is not always the case. So that means even a leader who's not a believer, you can be praying, God, let them follow your lead, even if they don't know they're following you. Give them wisdom to do the right thing for the people beneath them. And you could also pray that they get out of office, like I said. <laughs> okay. H. And this is an interesting thing for believers. How many believers pr pray for this, that Jesus would return? We're supposed to be praying for that. Oh, I don't want him to return yet. I got a couple more things I got to do. Titus 2, 11, 12, and 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And before we get to the next scripture, that's a great scripture. How are we supposed to live in this world like everyone else, crazy, knocking over things and everything? What are we supposed to do? that teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, in control, not flipping out and screaming, righteously, godly, in this present world. 
How else should we be living? 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're supposed to live each day saying, yep, I got to go do this day and I'm planning for this and planning for that. But if I could have everything, anything I wanted, Lord, come and take me out of here. If you think that there's anything better here than the Lord calling you in the, clown, in, in the clouds for the rapture, then you don't understand and you truly think this is the best place here. People, people all through history who knew the Lord their greatest desire was even so, Lord, come. Remember the last, what was the last, you know, the last book, the last chapter of the Bible, the last two verses. Revelation 20, 20, uh, Revelation 22, the last couple of scriptures. What were they? Okay, even so, Jesus says, the last thing he says is, behold, I come quickly. And what did John reply? Even so, Lord, come. Come now. John wanted him right there. Get me out of here. <laughs> if you don't want, and you really have to think about it. If for people who love Jesus Christ, and you see, especially in all these really flamboyant churches, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying every single one doesn't love the Lord, but you wonder because most of those flamboyant, charismatic churches who love Jesus Christ so much, the only thing they don't love is him coming back. Because all they love is living here and getting everything they want while they're here. They rarely ever, they don't teach that at all. They don't even want you to think about that. Because we're going to build our own little kingdom here. It's going to be our little perfect nirvana. And you're going to have your job you always wanted and the love that you always wanted and the car that you always wanted. You get whatever you wanted, but God doesn't get what he wanted. Us. Looking for that blessed hope. People, the blessed hope to all this mess is Jesus Christ. That's the blessed hope. Ain't nothing else that's the blessed hope. Okay, next one, I, letter I. God's will be done in every prayer you pray. In Matthew 6.10, what did Jesus say in, in how we should pray? Thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? We all know that. Everyone knows that, right? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But do we really understand what that means? Do we really, really want only God's will to be done? In every prayer request we make to God for anything, the end of that prayer request the reason why you're praying it would be, Lord, if you give me this thing, it's going to give you glory. And God's will is going to be done through this prayer request. Now, I know I'm going to get flack for, the, for this one, and I know people hate it when I talk about this because we're all thinking it. And I'm going to be honest, too. I'm thinking it, too. But you really have to really think about what the scripture says okay did you hear in the news i did i just saw it in the news today do you know how many people left new york this year three over three hundred thousand more than like five other states combined have left new york you know where you know what state got three hundred thousand people texas Texas, okay? They're coming from California, going to Texas. So what's the point? We all want to move, it seems. And it's this natural thing, you know, if, my, if I'm living in a sewer, I want to go where there is no sewer, okay? You want to go to a better place. I understand that. If you want to move, then move. But don't say that God is okay with it if you don't even care what God says about it. I know people say, yeah, but I can't afford to live here. Do you think if God wanted you to stay here to serve, he wouldn't make it able that you can live? Is it impossible? You know, did God say, I can do anything, but I can't have you live in New York. It's too, it's too hard. My middle son and my older son, the two of them, they're not leaving. They love it here, okay? They both have homes. They both have great jobs, and they're fine. So people say, it's just too hard. 
Well, if God wants you, how about if you're a senior? It's really hard. It really is expensive. I totally get it. And it's not just the money, it's, it's, it's the politics. It's all horrible. Believe me, I want to get out once a week. <laughs> I think about it. I think about it a lot. But God has clearly answered my desires. But let me just say this. People always, you know, when you pray, we make a mistake and we say, God, do what's best for me and my family. Do you know that's wrong? You should be saying, God, do what's best for me and my family that is according to your will, that by us getting this, we'll be able to serve you better. If, if it means my family stays or my family goes at the end of the day. And I know, and we all know a lot of people who have moved. And I'm not going to make any judgment calls. But I truly wonder, did they really say God? Or did they even want to know what your will is? I don't think we want to know his will. I don't think we care. Because have you ever prayed for something and you want it so bad you make sure it is God's will? You convince yourself, oh, God's pointing me to this. Lamborghini, he's telling me, you better get that Lamborghini. Everywhere I go, I see Lamborghinis. It's obviously God wants me to get a Lamborghini. <laughs> People, we can convince ourselves that this is what God wants. We do it all the time. Sad thing is, and you know the truth, very few people are moving with God's will in mind. I tell you, I don't care. I know me, and I know you. But what we really want, and let's be honest, we want our best life now. And I want to be where it's easy. I want to be where it's better. I do. I'm really getting to hate New York. I really am. It's sad. It breaks my heart. I don't want to be here. With every fiber of my being, I've been searching for places to go. And you know what? God's not going to give me any peace. And I've clearly, you know, and until he changes his mind, he's told me what I don't want to hear. He goes, Scott, I don't want you to go. I want you to stay here till the ship goes down, and then you can jump off, but not one minute sooner. You can go there, 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 and live, you know, in your... Nirvana, your little farm with the, looking up at the acres with my rocking chair on the front porch. But you're not going to be happy. Okay? Because there's a part of me in the flesh that says, you know what, Lord, I just want to get out of here. I want to go get a farm. I want to sit in a rocking chair and watch New York burn. You know? Isn't that horrible? Isn't that horrible? What, boys? Pastor, don't say such things. Uh, I, I tell you honestly, I have moments when I think like that, okay? Because I'm a sinner, and it's horrible, and I, and I confess it. And I say, oh, God, what a selfish wretch I am. But you get so aggravated, and you get disgusted. You say, who needs this place? God says, I do. Remember with Sodom, right? And, and Abraham and Lot, you remember that, you know, Remember Abraham begging God, Lord, are you going to destroy Sodom? God goes, yeah, I'm going to destroy it. How about if there's like, you know, he starts off with like, how about there's 20 good people? I'll spare it. How about if there's 10? How about if there's five? God says, I'll spare it. How about there's one righteous? God says, I'll spare it. And you know what that means? If everybody, I'm just using this uh, as a talking point. Let's just say, do you think there's people on Long Island who need to be saved? A whole bunch. Okay? What if every Christian says, I'm out of here? The heck with them. Isn't that what we're saying? You know what? You guys, I got saved. You get saved. You're on your own. It's time for me to take care of me. That's what we're saying, people. It's what we're saying. And I know a lot of people are more going to be moving and they're going to hate me for this. But I just want you to all, if you get the okay, I'm not saying if God says definitely go, move, then go, follow him. You got peace with that? Go, and you'll be blessed where you are. But I tell you, if you move there, you better be planning on serving God. Do you know there's no such thing as retirement in God's... You never see it in the Bible, ever. 
Until the day you die, you better be in a church serving somewhere, doing something. Because if you think your service to go out and preach to all the world ends at some time, when does that end? If you're in a nursing home, we got to be careful. When you pray, are you truly seeking God's will? Really? Or the will you want God to have? Hey, God, I think it's time for me to move. Okay? But I, if I move, Lord, i got to go. People, I don't want to go anywhere without his thumbs up, I tell you. And I've told this before. You know what? You can say, I want to go to live in Hawaii and I'll be happy. And God says, you can live in Hawaii and you'd be a miserable person there. Because if I wanted you to live in Alaska, in the worst place on the planet, that's the only place you'll find peace. You can't run. People, this whole idea, and I see it everywhere, it's this mentality of we've got to get out of here. Where are you going to go? Yeah, there's some better places to go. They're cheaper, probably more Christians. But are we supposed to hang out with a bunch of Christians? Supposed to go out into the world. Not stay in. Supposed to go out. So if everyone left Long Island, who's going to reach the lost? Does God care? You know, and I'll give you, you know what, when God tells us, okay, everyone who's going to get saved on Long Island is going to get saved, you guys could all leave. Then we can go. But until we hear that from God, someone's got to stay here. Someone. And is it going to be a sacrifice? Yeah. I'm not going to get my will. I'm not going to get my happily ever after. Because my happily ever after is living on some farm in Pennsylvania. That's where I want to go. With a whole bunch of property, and I can work on my farm and get a tractor, and I want to be this farmer guy, and I want to be away from people. <laughs> that's, my, that's my happily ever after. But God says, but that's your will. Do you care what my will? God says, well, I think you're well, Pastor Scott, and you're going to stay here right to the end, okay, and preach and teach. If there's one last person in this, in this community who's looking for hope, and I said, sorry, you're not getting any hope from me. I'm out of here. Shame on me. That's what God's saying to me. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but that's what I hear from God. You might hear something else, but it doesn't change the point that when we pray, you've got to pray Lord, your will be done. How do I know this? Matthew 26, 42. Jesus went away the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. What was the best life for Jesus? Not going to the cross and getting beaten and whipped and getting a, dying a miserable death. But what did he say? You know what? It's... Better for me, but it's not better for God. God's will is that I go and I suffer. God's will might be that I stay and suffer here on Long Island. So that's all the stuff of what we need to pray for. Okay? I'm going to give you the good side, upside here. Okay? What can we pray for? Okay? This is what we want to hear. This is the good part. What can we pray for? People, we can pray for a lot. Okay? And I don't care. You know, there's always this, this thought that I have. You know what? If it's big enough to concern you, it's big enough to pray about. Because if you have a hangnail or a pebble in your shoe or, a, or you know, I had one of those plantar wart things on my feet. Man, it was horrible. I was praying for that foot all the time. I was praying for my foot. If you got a pain, you pray for it. You pray for everything. Psalm 37, 4. And I'll tell you this. Pray for all your desires, minus sinful ones. You can't be praying for sinful desires. Okay? I really want to hook up with this girl, God. I know she's married and I'm married, but it really would be great. No. You can't pray for that. Okay? Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Great scripture. <gasps> we love that one. We love that scripture. People, we can pray for the desires of our heart. 
And I am still praying, and I still have it. I said, Lord, you know what? If there's any way, you know, if everything doesn't come crashing down and I can get out of here, I still have my dream of a farm in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I still am praying for that. But the only thing is, is I'm not going to do it as soon as I do. I was planning on it. I'm not doing it at all. I said, but I still want to pray for the Lord. If it be possible, like Jesus said, if it be possible, I really would like, you know, when I come to retiring age, to retire, and I would like to retire on a farm, and I would get involved in a church there. I would definitely do full-time counseling. That's my desire, just to stop being a pastor anymore, just to counsel. Counsel, counsel, start my practice, help out a church, it would be great. But only if God wants it. But I still pray for it. Right now, he's telling me, no, not going anywhere. I stopped looking at online all the little, you know, I had all these you know, apps on my phone of land finders and uh, what's that, uh, Zilla, Zillow, Zillow, looking at these, me and my wife going, oh, this house is beautiful, we've got the movie here, it's got like three garages and a lift too, man. I can park the Jeep and the race car there and then it's going to be great and we got like 40 acres. And we'd be like teasing ourselves, living in this, like, <laughs> over this stuff. Not anymore. I got rid of it. Not doing it. Pray for the people. I have prayed for the silliest things, but they weren't silly to me at the time. I have prayed for a bolt to break loose. If you're a mechanic and you're working on something and a bolt is frozen, it's a pain. Okay, working on Levi the Jeep, man, I've prayed over that thing a lot, putting it together and saying, oh, Lord, this... This bolt is frozen. If it snaps, I have to cut it. I got to drill it and tap it. Uh, I pray over everything. I have prayed over bulldozers and backhoes and payloaders when I used to be a heavy equipment mechanic. I mean, so many times I'd be working on stuff and I'd be going, I can't figure out why this thing won't run. I don't know what to do. And I would always go, God, can't figure out what's why won't this engine run and I tell you I would get this check the fuel system in the back I tell you, and I would go oh okay I go back check this thing that's what it was thank you God God is the master mechanic he knows everything don't be afraid to pray for it so many times he's got me out of so many jams because God I don't know how to fix this I don't know what to do Pray for anything. Pray to meet someone. You can pray to meet someone. People are always talking about that. I need to meet someone. Pray to meet someone, but it better be the one that God wants you to meet. You better be able to say, Lord, but not my will, your will be done. Because, boy, that's a big one. We can convince ourselves that this person is definitely who God wants. He may be. They may be. Pray. Pray for healing, people. Definitely pray for healing. All the time. You listen to our prayer chain. Okay? We're, pr we're always praying for healing. Pray for this one. Pray for that one. Pray for the sister who just fell down and got hurt. Pray for who has COVID. We pray. Pray for money. You can pray for money. We pray for money all the time. Lord, we got bills to pay. I need money. I need this. I need that. I need to buy a car. Pray for happiness. Pray for happiness. Lord, I want to be happy. I just want to be happy. Pray for test results. Have you ever prayed for test results from a doctor? How about tests when you're in school? Was that old saying? As long as there are tests in school, there'll be prayers in school. Remember, they kick the, you can't pray in public school. As long as there are tests, there's going to be praying. Okay? Because nobody knows what you're thinking in your heart. When you're facing something, you're like, oh, God, I need to pass this test. I've got to get through this semester. Pray about it. I pray for a great Jeep trip when I go on them. A couple of last ones didn't turn out so well. Okay? I prayed. God says, not this time. Some of them were great. Some of them were awesome. I still pray. I pray for that. I've prayed for what tires to buy. Okay? People, if you're going to go shopping, you know what? All the money you have is God's money. So when you go buy something, say, Lord, I need to buy a dishwasher, washing machine. Pray about it. Say, I need to get a good deal. I need to find a mechanic who's going to do the right thing. We, we think, oh, I'm not going to pray. That's silly. Pray about every single thing. 
I'm, I'm, I'm praying for something crazy. I got the, you know I have all these crazy ideas of ministries. I'm, I'm praying about starting a new ministry. I started and it never really wasn't big enough. I'm praying for this CB ministry, not a car CB. I want to get a CB in my house with a big antenna. And because I've been listening in my car when I go, well, I, have, I have a CB, I'm a big CB guy. And you know what? You can hear people, it's, it's amazing, from California, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. Lately, they call it Skip. They're all over the place, and the only guys who are talking are these guys with these big, high-powered radios. So I said, you know what? If that's your will, I'm going to buy... I don't want to buy anything. I want God to take care of it, and I'm going to set up something. And you know what? Maybe every Monday, I'm going to have an hour... Okay, the word of hope from Long Island and preach a little message on the airways because I hear all these guys and you and I can't talk to them. I can only hear them because I can't. My radio is not strong enough. Is that a silly thing to pray for? Not if people are going to get saved because God put it in my head the other day. Wow, this guy is talking from New Mexico. Clear as day. I wish I can talk to these guys because they're all talking about what's going on in the world. I great if I could jump in. And tell them, have you guys heard about Jesus Christ? I'll have like a broadcast for like an hour every Monday. I'll just read scripture over the air. Talk about giving the winds a mighty voice. Wouldn't that be cool? Someone somewhere might hear it. And it'll be fun at the same time. I've, pr- I've prayed at the racetrack that I would do a good smoke show burnout. Okay, I pray every time. You know why? Because if you don't, it's really embarrassing. You know, people think I've been doing a burnout. Timmy can tell you. Okay, <laughs> okay, for the last 16 years, every Saturday from May to September. And you know, every single time I get to do one, I get nervous. I always have a little bit of apprehension because when the stands are full, you got like 4,000 people, and everyone's like, okay, he's going to do a burnout. And one time I made a real big mistake. I, I should have had it in reverse. It was very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, a couple of times I did a donut, but, but I always get nervous and go, God, I don't want to make you look like a fool. Well, I'm probably more concerned about me looking like a fool. <laughs> but I pray that I burn my ties good for God. I do, because I, I get apprehensive. If you are nervous about something, pray about it. When I go to the dentist, I pray. God, I don't want to go to the dentist. Please, when the needle goes in, please, when he's drilling, let it not go crazy. Let there not be problems with my teeth. And I still have problems with my teeth because God, you know, maybe he wants me to keep on witnessing to the, to the dentist. I don't know. I have this thing now with this new guy. I got this endodontist who's working on I have to go back there. And I keep on going back. And I think there's some kind of God thing going on there. And I'm like i got to go back to this guy. I know I'm going to have to go back. God, I know I have to say something to this guy. God says, I'll just have you keep going back with broken teeth until you say something. I go, oh, man, I pray when I go to the dentist. <laughs> I have one, the government one, but it doesn't cover a lot of stuff. I just got it, actually. Praise God. Um, pray for your flowers, right? Our sister, Rory, does her flowers, you know what? I tell you, you pray over anything, it really blossoms, right? She prays over everything she does for this property. And if people drive by and they stop, they write us letters from the neighborhood. Wow, your church is absolutely beautiful. In the summertime, it looks like a manicured estate because somebody's praying about it. They're not just planting flowers. They're planting flowers for God to represent him and his creation. Pray for it. Pray for your kids. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for your transmission when it's starting to make noise. It's the first thing I do. Oh, God, what does that mean? What is that check engine light? My mom's always praying for her check engine lights all the time. <laughs> I'm sure there are ladies who pray for your hair and your nails when you go, I hope this new person doesn't mess up my hair. Can you pray for that? Sure you can. God says, you're my child. If you're concerned about that, let me ask you a question. As a parent, when your little child comes over to you and their toy, a wheel falls off, and they say, Mommy can you, or Daddy, can you fix this? Do you say, that's a silly thing. It's a stupid toy. No. You're concerned about it. 
And you say, let's, let's see if daddy or mommy can fix that for you. Because it's important to them. If it's important to us, it's important to God. People, don't you understand the great thing about God being the father and us being his children? He doesn't expect us to be all together. He expects us to be dependent because we are lambs. We're little sheep. And he knows that we get our feelings hurt easily. We get little boo-boos, spiritual boo-boos. And what do we say? God, kiss, kiss the boo-boo. Please. And God says, of course I will. That little thing, that person that wherever you are who made fun of you, it bothers you. If it bothers you, it bothers me. You pray for that person. You pray for them. But always pray, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, in this prayer being answered, let the end result always be your glory. Something is going to be good for you in this prayer. It can't, because if it's not, if you go, God, I don't really have, want this to have anything to do with you. I just want this for me. Then it becomes selfishness. Then it's sin. That praying is sinfulness. Everything, Lord, I, you know, I need to do this. I, I would want to go here. I'm going on a journey. Whatever it is, pray for it. Traveling mercies. And I drive in the slow. So, but at the end of the day, Lord, Whatever's going to be good for you. And I know there are Christians who say, well, you just threw away the whole prayer then yeah, because you're giving God an out. No. Jesus said, not my will, but thy will. But that's good for me too then. God, this is what I want. God says, bring me your desires. And we do. Pray for the job that you want. Pray for the career. Can you pray for a lot of money? Sure you can. Let me give you an example. Say you are praying for a job because you want to make a lot of money. You can pray for that, absolutely. But what happens if, and this is the part I want to make, let's say you pray for that, but you know if I get that job and I make that money, in order to keep that job, well, I'm probably going to have to lie a little bit. I know it's part of the job. I'm probably going to have to miss church. I'm probably going to have to compromise my faith. I'm probably going to have to stop serving God. Well, then why would you pray for that job? Okay, if it's going to be something, at the end of the day, it's going to push you further away from God than to you. Don't you understand? God is always concerned about what's going to pull us away from Him. And if the enemy waves a carrot that's like, this is what you always wanted, and you go, yes, and you jump for it, but it drags you away from God, how can it be good for God? Okay. What do we always say? You know what? You raise your kids and you, treat, you, know, you train them to be good and, 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 and have a great life, and they meet one friend who ruins everything. Are you happy about that? This friend is taking them and getting them involved. No, you want to punch that friend in the nose because you're destroying my child. I invested my whole life in raising him. One bad friend could take them all away. And God looks at us the same way. Because you might think that if you just had that, you would have everything. But it's going to take you away from me. I'm not going to give it to you. Sometimes God can, you know, and we call that God's permissive will. Can God answer a prayer that he doesn't want us to have just to show us that when we get it, it's not what we wanted? Okay? Funny story, and I know our sister Lois won't mind, but funny story, years back, uh, she had, an, and this is a strange thing, she, had a, she has a really great job, she's a legal secretary, and and she had an opportunity at another place. And she came and she saw me, your pastor, let's pray. I said, we prayed and prayed. And she quit her job that she's been there for so many years. She took on this new job and she hated it. She was crying. She was so upset. And she said, what do I do? I'm so stupid. What do I do this for? I said, we'll pray and maybe call up your boss, your old boss. She did. She took her back. She's been working there ever since. Right? Sometimes we think, this will be so great until you go there and then you miss what you had before. Right? Praise God for second chances. Praise God that when we make mistakes, He can get us out of them too. 
But you know what was interesting? You know what? I, and I loved her for her humility. What a dumb thing I did. She was so upset. She was crying in my office. So I loved my old job. What did I go to this job for? I don't like these people. Now I really messed up my life. So we just pray. And I said, and I said why don't you just call your old boss? We want to call my old boss. I'm going to be so humiliated. Just do it. Pray about it. Call him. Tell him I made a mistake. I really didn't appreciate what I had. And I am so sorry. Would you consider taking me back? And he said, absolutely, we would. Isn't that amazing? It's a true story. You guess Lois about it. In closing, this is the most important header for all of our prayers. When we pray, Ed, Lord, may this thing I pray for bring glory to you. Just make sure that's a part of your prayer. Not just glory to me. Lord, let it not take me. Father, I really want to, you know, let's say I want to move here, I want to get a car, I want to marry this person, whatever it is. Lord, I really want that. But, and this is hard, but if that's going to pull me away from you and your plans for me, then I don't want it. That's hard to do. And so, Lord, how do we pray? Lord, thy will be done in death and in life in sickness and in health, in riches and prosperity, whatever you're... What did Paul say? You know what? I have been rich. I have been poor. I've had a lot. I've had a little. I've been everywhere, done everything. I've had everything. But nothing gave me peace like just being where God is. You know what? Wherever I am and in all things, you know what? Paul was able to say, I gave all glory to God. When I was rich and doing well, I gave glory to God. When I ran into financial bad times, I gave glory to God. When I was healthy, I gave glory to God. When I got sick, I gave glory to God. And we know when he had that thorn in his flesh. God says, no, Paul, I'm not taking this away from you. Okay, thy will be done, Lord. I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Pray. Pray your hearts out. It's, it's the best thing. God loves our prayers. He wants our prayers. Uh, and you don't have to go through every single thing I said. I was, oh, I'm going to follow best. It's God's list. Did I pray for Israel? Did I pray for this? But just make sure you don't forget those things. You know, every once in a while, I would throw them in there. I mean, I pray every single day for the peace of Jerusalem. Why? Because God says to do it. Okay? He goes, and I will bless those, okay, who pray for Jerusalem. Okay? Why do we think we... Fly this Israeli flag. You know how many people, Christians, think we're nut jobs to do this? I think if you guys are crazy. You're like a target. Maybe so. Maybe one day we'll pay the price for it. But God says to stand for Israel, so we stand for Israel. God says to the Jew first, to the Jew first. Okay? I do it not because it might be foolish. It might be stupid to the world to do such a thing. But if God says it, we do it. And... There might be a consequence. There might be a cost. But I know I'd rather do the right thing and suffer for it than do the wrong thing and just live with my feet up, relishing in my decision that it's taken me completely away from God. I know these are hard things, people, when we think about, you know, praying and like, oh, the Lord's will be done, because I really, you know, I know it's hard. But if we really trust God, will say, God, I don't, you, people, do you really know what's good for you? I don't. I used to think all my life that I really knew, gee, if I had A, B, C, and D, I would be so happy, God. That's all I need. Well, that went out the door because this is a stupid, because I realized, God, I don't even know. That's why we should even pray, God, help me to know what to pray for. I don't even know what to pray for. I, I've shared before with my youngest son, Luke, when down in North Carolina. You know, it got to the time, it, like, uh, the was like, God, I don't even know what to pray for him. I don't know what the answer is. I'm praying that he made a good girl. He got a I don't know. I don't know. And I would say, God, I don't even know. Be with my son. Your will be done. And people, you know what the hardest thing to pray is? And I don't ever tell you that you should ever do this lightly. Okay? Because I did it once. Someone told me years ago, you really want to see God working in your life? Say, God, 
I pray that you would do whatever it takes in my life to make me who you want me to be. Anything, do it. Well, I wouldn't pray that so quickly because what you're doing is telling God, okay, roll up your sleeves. Really, you mean that? Because I might have to pull, twist, rip, and completely rebuild you from the ground up. Do you want that? I might have to take some life to wake things. I might have to really do some. And it was, and I finally, someone told me about that prayer, and then I waited, it was like a year, it kept haunting me. I'm afraid, because I don't know if I want God to do anything, whatever it takes to make me who you want me to be. It's like, I don't know, that's really opening up. What if God says, I'm, I'm taking your wife, taking your kids? That's how you're going to be really, and I didn't do it. And one day I said, I'm, I'm going to do it. And you know what? It was after that is when I fell into depression. I almost took my life. Everything came crumbling down. But you know what? It was then that I knew what I was called to do. And that's when I got my call to be, the path, to be a pastor. Because God says, I, you, you ready? Because I'm going to have to work you over. I'm going to have to break you away from things. Complete humility, trusting in yourself. But if we trust God, you know, and I, and I can say, with my, you know, I haven't done this yet. Um, I haven't with my son. Say, God, do whatever it takes to make him who you want him to be. It's hard to pray that prayer. You know, do whatever it takes. So right now I'm just saying, God, I don't know what to pray. Be with my son. Lead him, guide him. At the end of the day, I hope he serves you and loves you and, and has a life. You know, and you'd fix things. But I don't know how to do it anymore. Because And you know, as a parent, you always say, you know, he needs this, this, and this. And if you have him do this and make him do that and get him here and get him there. I don't know if that's the right thing for him. I don't know. And you can say, people, when you don't know what to pray for yourself, just pray, God, I don't know. But you do. Let your will be done. And God will do the right thing. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord... We thank you, Lord, for being such a great God and so patient with us. And, and you do offer us so much, Lord. And you do, Father. You answer, Father. Uh, certainly, Father, if I've never had a prayer answered, uh, I probably would not be following you, Lord. I mean, you are very, and, and that's not why I follow you, because you answer prayer. I, I follow you because you've saved me, and you are the truth. But it sure helps when you answer prayers and you have answered thousands of them, thousands. And everyone here can probably attest to the thousands. How many prayers have we forgotten about? The ones in the middle of the night, the ones about loved ones driving in a snowstorm. Do we forget about those prayers? Do we take them for granted when they come home and forget that we prayed about that? And maybe if we didn't, they wouldn't have come home safe. How many times do we do that, Lord? And we forget all the prayers. Watch over my kid. Watch over my husband. Watch over my wife. Watch over my grandkids. How many times have you watched over them? Father, do we remember? Do we thank you for it? You are the God who answers prayers. And I would say, Father, with every fiber of who I am, you answer most prayers, yes. You definitely do. You never failed. Never failed me. Ever. Even when it looked bleak, it wasn't you, it was me. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.